we just watched The Nun 2. No! Uh, and we decided we'll be doing a combo review with the first movie. This was an advanced screening, another advanced screening yeah. uh, by the South African Horror Fest um, with Empire. Yeah, got a bunch of our horror festers to come watch the movie before it released on circuit internationally. Yes. But yeah, like we said, we're going to do a little combo review of the very first Nun movie because yes. we decided to catch up on it. We did a little watch party uh, through Amazon Prime yes. last night. And coincidentally, tonight, today, is exactly five years since the first Nun was released. Oh, for real? Mm. Wow. 7th, 7th of September. Okay. Um, so it's been half a decade. Yo. And the, I'm glad we watched mm. uh, the, the, the previous one. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed it the first time. We watched it in cinema when it released. And I thought it might have been a bit watered down now, but I th it was still very mm, effective. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, well, the basic storyline of the first one has a young nun. She's called upon to go to, what's the place called? Uh, Saint, Romania. Yeah, in Romania, there's a there's an abbey with nuns. There was a suicide, so the Vatican they call yeah. a priest to go out there to go investigate, and they bring this this young. Well, she's not a, a nun yet. She was. She was before she's taken. She's she hasn't taken a vows final yet. Final vows yet. Um, yeah. uh, Sister Irene, mm. played by Taisa Farmiga, Farmiga, who is Vera, Vera Farmiga's Farmiga. sister, mm. which we. I never knew it until so <laughs> until we watched the the trailer of of the second one. And it's uh, it's actually so, it's so obvious. obvious. Yeah, because yes. we, we've beautiful. we've seen it in stuff like American Horror Story and loads of other movies, and I've just yes. never I've just never Made the caught connection. her name. No, but I just didn't. I didn't. Yeah, and I mean it's quite a unique name. If you asked me what her name was, I wouldn't have been able. Mm. I just told you it's that actress. <laughs> I think she was in that Final Girls movie as well. Yeah, I, think so. I could be wrong. I could be right. But yeah, so she's been in a couple of horror yes. things, just like her sister who's been in Bates Motel series, yes. obviously the Conjuring movies, but now, yeah, let's not get muddled here. Yes. So, the nun and this priest, they arrive at this abbey um, with a guy they call Frenchy, he's a French-Canadian guy who's living in Romania, and he's like helping out, making deliveries to yes. this church, and it's set in uh, 1952. 1952. That's correct, yes. And um, they're investigating the suicide of a nun, um, and then they, obviously, they encounter. For those who've not seen it, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but for those who've not seen it, they encounter the spirit or the demon, Valek the Defiler. Mm. Now, Valek the Defiler was conjured by the. Uh, yes, this this place was it, it was a, like a kind of a, a, a castle. A castle of this. So it was a nobleman. And, and he man, yeah. had some plans to, re to get this evil kind yes. of a force resurrected. That's right. Hello. Yeah, without getting into too much details. But then uh, the, the, the church decided had to yeah, contain it, had in, to this, contain it. in this spot. And, and obviously there was a... a, a in Second World War, there was a disruption that yes, released this. That released it again. Yeah. Or oh, then, then the church... Then the church went in and they they, yeah. they yeah they closed it up again. But they only they only it was only like a band aid. It wasn't really a solution. Yeah. If you watch the first movie, it, it wasn't really a solution. It was just containment, basically. And the, I mean the yeah. So it's, it's but it's it's this mission of them. It's one location. It's always effective for a horror yes. related movie. Yes. Yes. Couple. But basically three characters and some peripheral characters and the main villain, the nun, yes. the demon. But also, it's not a nun, it's this evil force taking the shape. shape. It's kind of like this big... Um, you know, I was, I was also thinking about it's always Catholic, you know, like the Exorcist, all these uh, possession, evil demon movies. It's usually Catholic. I think, is it because it's the, the most... The most glam rock of the religions I think yeah that, I think that's <laughs> definitely an element of it I also think that Catholicism is the only 
religion that I think all religions openly admit to the existence of demons, but I think Catholicism it's a reality and it's a and the saints are also a reality and it's they they're very much according to to the law around it and I think it is the the most symbolic of of religions in my opinion and you know they've got saints lots of rituals and of, of course a demon will will um, target a devout person mm. a, a very devout person and when it comes to uh, in horror movies you know that is like if 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 something is so evil that the the top echelon of religion cannot contain it then it must be pretty, Very. pretty damn bad. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, and uh, so I like think, the defiler is exactly yeah. how it sounds. <laughs> and it doesn't help that the nun looks like Marilyn Manson on a very bad day. Mm. Uh, she's actually a beautiful bunny Erin. She's actually yeah. a gorgeous woman. Mm. After, got, well, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's very unusual looking. Yeah. Not, not well, except for all the, the, the makeup, color yes. and lenses and yes. teeth and stuff. Yes. But, you know, she, she's got a very pronounced nose. The face that you see in the movie is, is her face. I mean, yeah. it's her with makeup on, but it's, I don't think that any prosthetics on her face. And then not, not, not everyone thinks that a, a, a pronounced nose is unattractive, like like uh, Barbara Streisand would look completely different if she had a normal nose. I love big noses. I mean, was a girl in um, Dirty Dancing? Yeah. She had a nose job done, no one recognized her. Exactly. Anyway, that's so much for noses. The nose um, is a big deal. But yeah. again, um, the, the, a particularly scary and evil um, depiction or, or form that this, um, that this demon takes. And what's interesting, in the first movie, they rely very much on relics, mm. Catholicism. You, you'll normally you'll find something of substance yeah. in most. Uh, Obviously, a lot of it was just created to draw people to churches yes. and but yeah, yeah. And to enhance but in faith, this case, it's actual relics that have a yes, very yeah. very purpose. But now also now this is I don't then I mean obviously it's not. But how much vampirism do you think is it? Why is it in Romania? There's blood related stuff yeah. it's the very, teeth it's very interesting i found it very interesting that the origin of it is in romania yeah. i think i think maybe it, it draws upon the existing uh what what, what shall you call it lore, lore. Um, yeah and also with um some it, it's you know it's set in the 50s and and in romania um, i think apparently still to this day people are still very much in the rural areas they're still oh, very yes. much stuck in their traditions yeah. um, so there were some interesting things like um like little bells on on graveyards if yes. people were pre prematurely bur buried they wake up they can during, during the, the plague, the plague yeah. they can ring the bell to, to be saved so they worked that in there for a very effective scene Oof, yeah. um, some some good scares we actually decided that we will start a scarometer for Sonia <laughs> every time she jumps yes um, and how many did you count for the first nun? Nine. Nine jumps. Nine, and that and that Ten. was on seeing it a second time. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I can imagine the first the first time was probably more. Yes. But I'm, I'm also thinking how much different it is if you watch it in cinema and at home. Do you, do you, is it when you're more isolated on your own without people around you, do you get yes, big, big, e easier, bigger frights? I think it's, yeah, definitely if mm. you're, if I think the, the experience at home is different to the experience in a, in a cinema. Yeah. Um, and also people laughing from getting scared. Yeah, the um, natural reaction. Yeah. So that sort of takes away some of mm. the... Some, some people start giggling in, in, in anticipation yeah. of the big scare. And I mean, this, scare. The, the first yeah. Nun movie, it, it looked good. I mean, the, this old abbey and the building and the, the mood. And I mean, it's, yeah. the, the, these kind of movies, it's, it's probably a dream for a cinematographer to light. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's an actual old historic building or a set. And a just, gigantic set with old architecture or just something yeah. that looks like old architecture. You know, that's, I'm sure that's, they really have fun doing that. And it's, if they do it effectively, it is. And they did. And, and quite interestingly, the, the mother superior at this abbey, it's up the, the cloister, she reminded, the, the look of her sitting there on her, in, on her chair, yeah. reminds of um, Insidious. Mm. 
of the veiled woman. Yeah. It's just something that, that I picked up that I thought was quite, I wondered if it was intentional. Well, I mean, it's James Wan, yes. who also in touch to Insidious, yes. an Australian guy that pretty much single-handedly changed horror the last decade with Saw movies, The Conjuring movies, yes. and the Insidious, Insidious. movies. Yeah. I and, mean, and uh, Lee Wannell, the, the writer. Of yeah, course. all in all, the, the he first didn't, He didn't direct, he was producer on this okay. one. He didn't direct this one. Chavez, he did the La Llorona movie, which, yes, which is attached yes, yes. to The Conjuring. Yes. And he did the third Conjuring movie, and now The Nun. So he's done three Conjuring yes. universe. Wow. I, I hate that term, Conjuring that's universe. That's unfortunately but that's, yeah. probably the best way to describe it. Mm. Which I, also obviously includes Annabelle, the yes. various Annabelle movies. Yes, yes. So there's a whole bunch of them. There's so many Conjuring movies, which Tell us in the comments which your favorite, which yes. are your favorite ones, which is your favorite thread, because you have the the Warrens, you have the Annabelles, you have um, the Nun. So yeah. yeah, which which of these are your favorite, your favorite levels of conjuring? What is your favorite? Uh, probably the first one. No, no, but from Actually, the, the from the threads, which one would you? Oh well, the original the. The, the Warrens, the first, second. The Conjuring. The first and the second ones, they are but kind of on a par for me. Yes. We, we actually reviewed all three yeah, of them. Yeah, the third one. So check them up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And um, the third one wasn't, I didn't enjoy it as much. So the first and second one are the, the best for me, which is, I guess, I of, often the case with most things. Yes. Um, but I think, yeah, no, they, I mean, they're all, it's, it's, it's such a, cool thing that it just spread like like mad how this mm. this uh, franchise just became a whole thing unto itself obviously the, the, the first nun ends very clearly mm. with an indication that we've, we're not seeing the last of, of Maurice or Frenchie and an interesting thing which I forgot about the first one yes. is it opens and closes with with the Warrens that's correct from well, the, the two so we go paranormal investigators. Yeah. Are the paranormal investigators? He's a demonologist. And she's, she's a, a clairvoyant, clairvoyant. Yeah. medium. Uh, which reminds me, um, the uh, sister Irene. She also has visions, and that's also one of the reasons that they. I think they they pulled it into yes. to try and get to stop or f figure out what's going on at this. At this uh, abbey. abbey, that's correct. But yeah, we're not going to tell you how it ends, but no. it flows very well sure. into the new, the second yeah. one. Yeah. The actors, you know, if you had to watch them back to back, which we did, we watched yeah. the first one last night. Which I'm glad we did, yeah. You know, five years later, they all, they didn't age too no. much. Um, and yeah, it, it flows from Romania, now it's in, in, France. in France. Is it four, about four years later or so? It's uh, 1954. Two, uh, yeah, was it 54? Four, 54? five, six. Well, yeah. it's a couple of years later. Yes. I think we said um, four years later, so it must have been 56 then. Mm. And Sister Irene gets pulled into this again. Yeah. So if, if we move on from the first nun to the one we saw tonight. Are we going to score the first one now or score them both I at the end? I think we score them both at the end. But first, Sonia's scareometer for the nun, the first nun is. Yeah, nine. Ping! Ping! But I'm, I'm gonna make a meat thing, it oh. goes ch -ch 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 ting! Something like that. Okay, so we start off in France at, at a church and the priest dies very shame, very badly. And the altar boy witnesses it. Now there's a connection. Um, I'm not sure if we should we should say what the connection is. No. But then the Vatican picks up on several instances of um, a priest that kills himself with a rosary, a nun that hangs herself, um, various kind of following a yeah, path. following a path across Europe, uh, and they they obviously become suspicious as to the 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 origin of it, and for some reason, which is a little bit unclear, but they do come back to the 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 Valek, the defiler and uh, and because um, sister Irene is 
is a sort of considered now an expert on this demon. Well, the, gets, the, the main reason she figures out is because where this whole thing, yeah, so where this whole trail starts. So the Vatican pulls her in and then she's got a companion nun. She's from New Orleans, so she's got an American accent, which was, yeah, it was, in the beginning it, bought, it was a bit weird, but then I got used to it. So Sister Irene and her companion, they traveled to France to now follow and find and hopefully locate um, where this demon is and why the demon is where it is. But there's a boarding school, a girls school and strange things start happening there. So this is where Valak is popping up. Yeah. And there's a very sp particular reason which you figure, which you find out later. But, but these two storylines run concurrently. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're kind of on their way there. Yeah, yes. And there's an element from the first nun at this boarding school, yes. which you will see when you watch it. And then, interestingly, another relic comes into mm. into the, the fray. And then also there's a there's a very spe specific story behind the relic, and yeah. which we're not going to give away because it's it's yeah, quite it's, an intricate for sure. and a nice storyline. Yeah. But all in all, I really enjoyed this film. It was beautifully shot and it was, the, the acting, everything was great. Less scares for me, but I think mm. I've had all my scares in the trailer. Yes, you had multiple scares watching the trailer multiple yes. times. <laughs> the same spot. Same spot, but I didn't have that same spot yeah. again in, in the film. I was yeah. very prepared no, for, for it. Sure. So, um, well, we might as well just say, what was your scare scarometer on this one? Five. Five. Yes. So that's almost half of the first one. But I don't think that should count for anything. I think when we watch the first one, I mean, you know, for the most part, it's also, it's, it's jump scares. So yes. it's not like you see something that really chills you to your bones, like drag me to hell did for you. <laughs> Which also reminds me there was something in here which was very drag me to hellish. Very much so. And yeah. we were sitting in the same cinema in the same spot where we watched Drag Me to Hell when it yes. released. Yes, and interestingly, <laughs> we, when the first nun, we were the only two people in the cinema. I remember that very, mm. very clearly. We went and it was it was also either that cinema at the waterfront or mm. one left mm. or right. Mm. Well, I can add that the, the guy, Maurice, the, the actor is great. He is a fantastic actor. He's He's just perfect for the role. He actually reminds me of a guy, a French guy that I knew. <laughs> it's okay. kind of very authentic. Um, I, I don't really recognize him from anything except the first nun, but he, he sort of, um, what's that guy's name? Army Hammer? Uh, he reminds me a bit of that guy, but uh, that's irrelevant. There were some very, very cool um, visual sequences mm. of the nun materializing and stuff like on the trailer like the magazines flipping wow, those wow, were very very cool wow excellent and, and sort of a moldy Spot blotchy wall. walls um yeah. yeah those were those were very effective and very, the smoke very... smoke from the 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 holy water font yes. sort of uh, yes. Drying up. And Lots of smoke dr dramatic to, use of nice, like, nice transitions, things yes. turning into the nun. And I think dramatic use of a, a Christian um, iconography. Iconography, yes. Soundtrack was by Marco Beltrami. He's done loads of horror movie soundtracks since way back the original Resident Evil. Um, so that's always effective. Um, you know all the all the bits and pieces you can see the same people worked on it because it was it was seamless and it was in quality it was on the two movies were completely did Gary Dorberman write uh, direct the first one or did he write co-produce he was involved with it but yeah he, he wasn't in, so, in both so I saw his name again mm. di different so mm. it's not the same director as the first one um, I don't know if it would have been you know so, for some of me like I didn't even get a single jump scare for this but while we were watching the first one I caught about three times where I got a bit mm, of a, mm, a mm. Skrik. so I yeah. think that they're setting us up maybe for a for a third one well, the problem I mean you know you always have to do things in tr trilogies uh, yeah. I guess I mean that they, they haven't really but now the thing is it's not it's not a nun that's possessed so it's not like you can go into the history of this nun no because it just materializes as, as a, a nun. nun 
and for some reason it always looks like the same land. But now, as I was watching this movie, um, there's a reason this nun travels. Well, this nun, <laughs> this force, <laughs> this, this demon this Valak demon. travels mm. across Europe. Um, but now it has kind of possessed someone. So why does it have to keep coming back as a nun? Why can't it just? You know what I'm saying? In the in the abbey, it had mm. its purpose. You know, it's like kind of this mm. insult mm. and this profound, uh, what would you call it? Um, you can also see it as the way that the characters that experienced Valak before, that they see, they continue to see Valak as this I incarnation guess, yeah. of himself mm. or herself. Unless Valak just somehow likes the look. Yeah, and it also <laughs> works for the movie. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, stylistically, this is... It is the night. Yes. So. Yes. Uh, and, I, and I want to also add this. Mm -hmm. Kudos to Marilyn Manson. He really, ins I think he really inspired some. There was specials. another scene. Yeah. Everyone towards the end that looked very, end. very Marilyn Manson is live. Live performance. He's, 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 he's uh, yeah. got guns and government yes, tour. tour. <laughs> I don't know, he probably still does that, I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, interesting and, and, and it's amazing the resemblance. I know, I, we, I don't always, know if somehow we always come back to Marilyn I don't know, Manson. I don't know if it's, if it's deliberate or I don't if think it was, so, uh, but it, it's definitely... Um, it's, it's maybe just a, 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 a nod to how clever he he's... Um, the people that design his act or himself. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, a creep factor yeah. that that you only you can only make, get it in that manner. Mm. So yeah, interesting. Cool. Um, okay. Well, score-wise, I would say for the first one, I would um, fluctuating between seven and eight, but I would fall back to a seven. Um, I agree with you on a seven, and I have to say that I have to score the second one a seven as well. A seven, second one. So that's a average seven for the first one yeah and then for the second one I would drop to a six. Oh, okay yeah hmm. so then it's a six and a half average okay. for for me the movies they were equally they were on a par with one another and mm. I thought and I and I really think that that's that says a lot yeah the fact that you, that the two could show you could show the two as one yeah no, no, definitely they, mm. they, they, they blend very well together. Mm. Mm. But it was just that the second one just didn't add a little little less. I guess because we've also now you're familiar with it. Yes. It's not new. Um, yeah. Cool movie. Go watch it. Love uh, it. Yeah, I can recommend it. Thanks to our friends at Empire for sorting this out for our Horror Fest connections. They all got to see it before ev the rest of the people in the world, like us. So, let's get out of here. Before you do, uh, please like and subscribe. Yeah. Um, leave a comment. Check out some of the other reviews, all the other stuff. We're currently uh, finalizing our 19th annual South African Horror Fest Film Festival. We've got some more advanced screenings coming up, leading up to it, where we get a bunch of tickets for people to watch. We've got Talk To Me coming up. We're going to be doing The Exorcist Believer, Five Nights at Freddy's, but the last two we will be doing as part of the Horror Fest. So if you buy a Horror Fest ticket, you stand in line to score yes. tickets for an advanced screening of The Exorcist Believer and Five Nights at Freddy's, which will be over October and November. And that includes people that buy online tickets, right? Yes, yeah. For online. Because we most probably have one in Johannesburg as well. So if you watch online Horror Fest from up there, you can score a ticket <laughs> up there. Cool. We'll see you next time. Ciao.